The Ukrainians have firmly established several bridgeheads on the left bank of the Dnipro, which already led the Russians to dismiss the local commander, probably because he didn't anticipate it or didn't contain the bridgehead fast enough. While the fighting along other sides of the front line continues and the Ukrainian side has additional gains to report, both sides can expect serious additions to their fighting capabilities in the coming days and weeks. Hello and welcome to this situation report about the war in Ukraine. We start on the eastern frontier, mostly in Luhansk, somewhat in the oblast of Kharkiv. The Russians attacked at various points without any proven success. And a Russian military blogger was writing the Ukrainians were counterattacking at Rajhorodka and were gaining some positions. So the only success, the only change in territory we can report for the past roughly three days is the Ukrainians pushing forward a little bit here, but it's probably just some frontline positions, so no serious change. South of the Sivyevsky Donetsk, the Ukrainians have advanced at several points. The, they were recorded across the, the railroad line here, cl both close to Kurdyumivka as well as close to um, Andrivka. Here they were right south of Andrivka on the eastern side of the railroad line. And in a video that shows combat between Russians and Ukrainians, Ukrainian units are on this side right north of Kurdyumivka, basically here as well. So at several points they have now crossed the railroad line and are advancing further. Russian counterattacks in the regions were unsuccessful. I cannot confirm any change in territory in favor of the Russians. And the but the Ukrainian ground forces commander Sirsky said the Russians are bringing in big reinforcements towards Bakhmut and they are increasingly switching from defensive to a more active role towards the offensive. So we should expect some more activity from the Russians and probably some gains in the near future as well. Further south at Avdivka, I cannot record any change in territory. The Russians are still sitting here along the railroad line. That's at least what I see and what I found. And the uh, Ukrainian counterattacks along, along the front line here, along the uh, halfway pocket around Avdivka, have been unsuccessful as well. According to the Ukrainian side, the Russians have now concentrated 40,000 men just at Avdivka, and additional reinforcements are coming basically daily. According to Ukrainian uh, Ukrainian observer, the Russians have 12 rifle brigades, 16 rifle regiments of the mobilized reserve, 22 rifle battalions of the mobilized reserve, 11 separate tank battalions, as well as BARS and Storm Sea units. So BARS is the um, reserve of the Russian armed forces. He also expects that there are three additional motorized rifle regiments, as well as seven rifle battalions and two BARS units still in reserve on top of it. So we see a massive Russian troop concentration around Avdivka here. Even though the Russians have mostly switched to what is usually called here meat attacks, meaning infantry attacks without any real heavy support in the front line. There might be some tanks further back shelling over their heads, but overall the it's mostly infantry advancing, not even with heavy artillery support. And these infantry attacks are mostly done with Storm Z, but also with regular mobilized personnel. The assumption is that this is due to the heavy vehicle losses by the the Russians that they simply can't afford attacking further this way. Uh, we have further south, we do have some change along the front line. This here, south of Krasnohorivka, the mine was uh, captured by the Russians a couple of weeks ago, and now they have advanced further west of it. There is a video of the Russians, and we see them on the western side here, having advanced somewhat to the, to the west. They are pushing further west, south of and are trying to um, increasingly threaten it, while at the same time obviously increasing the pressure on Marinka as well. Further south at Vuleta, I have no changes to be reported. Novo Mikhailivka and Pobjeda neither. 
here in the oblast border south of Velika Novosilka, we do have some reports about Ukrainian attacks, smaller Ukrainian attacks at Staromayorske and Uroshine, which is here. They have not been successful and a lot of Russian attacks basically from Preyutne to Novodonetsk also happened and they also didn't achieve anything. So the situation here is unchanged. South of Orykhiv, we have some movement again. While Russian counterattacks failed, the Ukrainians were attacking more or less along that line again and again at several points. There are also reports about Ukrainian attacks towards Verbove, but we do have some minor change here west of Robotine. We see now that they are now at the second tree line. They have advanced towards the second tree line west of Robotine. That should be, I think, here already. They are now established there, so they are pushing their, uh, their break, um, their, their penetration of the Russian front line. They are working on widening it, which will be essential, essential for them to advance further south. West of it, I do not have any fresh report, but the biggest... Uh, the focus of the fighting and the most important fighting probably is along the Dnipro. The Ukrainians are still reported to attack at um, Pishchanivka. They are reported at uh, are reported to attack at um, at uh, here in the in the area. What well, Pishchanivka is here, Pitstepne and uh, Poima. In this direction, the, the Ukrainians are pushing, are still advancing and are still attacking, not advancing. They don't seem to have had success here. Towards Kosachi Laheri, there's also Ukrainian presence on the island here. And we have confirmation by the Russians themselves that the Ukrainians still hold Krinki. It's probably this area that is currently under Ukrainian control with a contested area in this direction, roughly extending to this degree. We also have video evidence evidence of the Russians. So this was the Russians admitting, Russian military blockers admitting that they have lost control of Krinki and that the Ukrainians are in there. And we have visual evidence of artillery shelling by the Ukrainians roughly 500 meters away from Krinki, showing that um, the Russians are somewhere here in the woods, but not even close to the to the town anymore. There's video evidence of the Ukrainian forces inside of Krinki. Obviously, it wasn't really dated. We knew that they were in it be in between. Then the Russian claimed that they had pushed them out again. But as of now, it seems to be clear that the Ukrainians are having firm control at least over a significant part of Krinki, Krinki and they are trying to advance further outside. Um, there are reports that the Russians use a huge amount of gliding bombs in the area, both on the left bank of the Dnipro as well as on the eastern bank, trying to strike the Ukrainian positions here and as well as their reinforcements. But at least to some degree, the Ukrainians seem to be innovative to resupply. There are reports that they're using drones not just to strike and to for reconnaissance, but also to simply fly it over the Dnipro to reinforce and resupply the units here in Krinki as well. From the Crimean Peninsula, we have additional reports of heavy Ukrainian attacks with drones, with air drones, sea drones are being reported. For example, in the night of the night between the 28th and 29th, the Russians were reporting 36 Ukrainian drones shot down. There are also additional reports now of storm shadow, whole waves of storm shadows that were used. Uh, some of it is unclear how much of it is true because the Russians claimed they shot every single one down, which seems kind of unlikely. But at the same time, there was also at an attack and strike on the Crimean Peninsula. We have even video evidence of them flying past where somebody has filmed them on the ground of the attack and flying past. They have hit targets on the ground, and while the Russians claimed that uh, they were not able to intercept it, it didn't do serious damage. The intelligence uh, insider Cheka OGPU channel said that they damaged several air defense positions, uh, stations, radar, radar devices, and caused casualties in the uh, size of 20 while attacking here. Obviously, with uh, their cluster munitions, they can cover a certain area and cause serious damage in the in the um, afflicted area. Generally, we have the information about the Dnipro area. The local commander was replaced and he's now getting replaced by Colonel General Teplinski. He's from the VDV and has a, generally has a good reputation. 
he already clashed with the Russian military leadership in the past by complaining about the usage of VDV as stormtroopers for which they aren't really made, basically wasting highly trained VDV in attritional battles, uh, which uh, meant which led to a lot of respect being gained by him as well next to his military capabilities by the Russian soldiers and he's now set put into command in this area here as obviously the lo the former Russian commander was not able to prepare for the current Ukrainian activity that shows massive Ukrainian activity on these islands here and along the the banks of the river more or less up to Krinky and over it as well as several bridges heads that aren't even visible here on the map itself. As of now, just to summarize it about the bridgeheads, we still only have infantry. They get support with air defense systems and with artillery from the other bank of the Dnipro. So we should not, we cannot expect a massive breakthrough here. What we will likely see is small infantry groups trying to slowly grind forward until they've pushed the front line far enough away that it's safer to bring over re heavier reinforcements to the other side of the river but as of now i have not seen any visual evidence of heavy weaponry artillery pieces tanks ifvs apcs anything like this on the left bank of the Dnipro. any ukrainian equipment obviously when it comes to troop generation we have some information that a part of the arbat battalion is being made up with wagner fighters that um, have left Wagner and signed up with them and they are fighting at Avdivka. So this would be a confirmation of the rumors that Wagner units were around Avdivka and um, giving uh, additional, adding their experience to the local fighting here. And a, a commander of the Ahmad Spetsnaz of the Roskvardia, which is like the Chechen Kadyrovsky, he said that Wagner fighters were also recruited in, into the Chechen units. Uh, that means that the Kadyrovtsi in part will now have Wagner fighters among them as well. Russia has also reported, is also reported to now use a, a computer, a AI guided or AI assisted Lancet drone. This is a Bad, this is bad news for the Ukrainians. There's visual evidence of a Lancet drone uh, making a target lock on a Ukrainian target and thus guiding itself inside. So according to um, what is being analyzed is that this likely means that Russia used machine learning to allow the Landsat drones to identify what is a target. There will still be a human operator necessary, but the terminal guidance seems to be automatic now, which should obviously make the Landsats much more dangerous as the hit probability should increase significantly. The Still though, so far, the there is there are some pictures, but that's it. So we don't have any detailed knowledge but at least the pictures don't uh, give much confidence that this isn't a massive improvement towards the landsets, which are also have which also have increased in range and increased in production. The Russians also said they introduced three new gliding bombs on basis of the FAB 250, FAB 500, and FAB 1500. As they are now switched to laser and satellite guidance, their CEP, the circular error point, where half of the bombs hit inside is now at five meters, meaning half of all the bombs that are launched this way supposedly hit within five meters. And this is obviously devastating as the bombs carry 99, 150 or 675 kilograms of explosives respectively. There has also been um, some other explosions and that in a massive ammunition plant inside of Russia. This is one of the largest ammunition plants. Some are claiming it's the biggest of all, but nevertheless, there were massive explosions. As of now, we don't know to which degree the damage is, uh, to what extent the ammunition plant is damaged. We also obviously don't know whether it was caused by Ukrainian sabotage or simply by overworked, un underqualified workers that made some mistakes. This isn't known as of now, but we do know that it actually is a fact that part of an ammunition plant uh, might have blown up. In the political sphere, we have um, news from Dagestan. Hundreds of anti-Semite uh, demonstrators uh, entered the Machachkala airport in Dagestan. Um, they entered the runway and were searching for Jews. Among that, 
uh, they were looking for planes coming from Tel Aviv and were chanting death to the Jews. There was also an attack on a hotel uh, where they were looking for Jews that supposedly were inside of that hotel. And before that, uh, they, there was also an attack on a Jewish culture center in Nalchik that was torched, that was set ablaze, which was currently under construction. Uh, before all of this happened, there were rumors on the internet that uh, Jewish... Uh, refugees were going to be settled in Dagestan. Russia, the Russian government, wanted to settle Jews fleeing from Israel in Dagestan, and that led to these anti-Semitic uh, riots. Police is now reporting that they identified 150 persons and detained 60 of them. But according to Putin, the West is at fault by um, creating the ruckus and trying to divide Russia by creating ethnic tensions. And according to others, uh, to, uh, to other local reports, Ukrainian telegram channels were supposedly spreading those rumors about Jewish settlers, Jewish refugees being planning to settle down there. Obviously, I have uh, no way as of now to, to confirm whether this is true, whether the West was involved but it should show us a sign to which this nationalism that is currently gripping russia in obviously connection with the war can lead to with these here um, people shouting death to the jews luckily they didn't seem to have found or and identified any jew but what would have happened to them if they had is obviously anybody's guess International support is coming for Ukraine, though. Ukraine are now sending frankincense. Uh, we talked about them in the past. It's mostly book starters with Sea Sparrow. The, um, it's possible to use Sea Sparrow missiles, which are in abundance. To, they can be used with Soviet-style book air defense systems that allows the Ukrainians to use a huge number of book systems for which they don't have ammo anymore to use them again for their air defense. Ukraine had roughly 60 vehicles without ammunition and they wanted to send 17 more to the US but the US can currently only convert five of them per month but that should mean that Ukraine will get five of them additionally every month. There's also a report that Sidewinder, the air-to-air -air missiles, are somehow being converted to work with Russian, with Soviet radar systems in which configuration exactly isn't completely known to me. That might be with the Strela starters or something like this. I have no idea, but there are also reports that Hawk, the Hawk air defense system, which is generally obsolete, but obviously still of use against cruise missiles, is also coming, more are coming from the US. And right now the Americans are also testing whether Patriots, the Patriot system can work with Ukrainian radar systems to allow for more starters to be integrated. And the Netherlands have reported have confirmed that the first F-16 will be delivered in two weeks to Romania so Ukrainian pilots can start training there, um, which <clears throat> gives us the the um, sign that Ukrainian F-16s will soon probably, will we will probably soon see F-16s already with <clears throat> the Ukrainian roundel, but uh, it'll obviously take a few more months until they should enter the war in Ukraine itself. And Azerbaijan is reported to send an aid convoy with 14 trucks. Most of what they bring is in regards to hardening or allowing the Ukrainian uh, go government to harden and repair the electric infrastructure. For instance, it's reported that these trucks carry, among other items, 555 kilometers of electric cables to help Ukraine repair its electrical infrastructure that is expected to be struck very hard very soon. That was it from me for now for the situation report. If you liked this, then please give it a thumbs up. It really helps with the algorithm. Write a comment what do you think about the winter coming winter campaign of Russia. Do you think they'll succeed in taking out the Ukrainian grid or will the Western aid be enough for Ukraine to help maintain their electrical system? If you're new here to this channel, I would like to invite you to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss future videos. This channel is only possible because of the support of viewers like you. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by the means in the description. Thank you very much to everyone already supporting this channel. And that's it from me for now. Thank you for watching and I'll be back.